Sometimes we get so used to thinking about using Macs to make large audio or video patches that it's easy to forget that there are other, more modest things we might also try. For this Practical Mac series, I'm going to focus on using Macs to produce single graphic images. I'm going to show you a patch I made a while back as a kind of generative homage to somebody whose art really moved me, and then I'll open the patch up and walk you through it. It started when I had some free time at the end of a visit to New York. My friend Luc Dubois mentioned that there was a show of outsider art called Obsessive Drawing at the American Museum of Folk Art that I might like. Man, was he ever right. In particular, I was struck by the work of a New Zealand artist named Martin Thompson, who made these extraordinary fractal drawings on millimeter graph paper using a rapidograph pen. He would meticulously calculate patterns by recursively overlapping really simple forms to produce these amazing images, draw them by hand and correct them if he made a mistake, and then produce a second drawing that was an exact inversion of the first one. I walked around for a couple of weeks with the memory of these amazing images in my head. And when an acquaintance called me about the possibility of producing a series of graphic images for a CD release series, I sat down one night and I created the first version of the patch that I'm going to show you. By the way, the CD project is still on hold at this point, but my little project wound up uh, being used in some other ways. The curators at the American Museum of Folk Art contacted me about using it, and my friend Christy Matson used these images as the basis for a bunch of beautiful weavings that picked out the designs using fine copper wires to create something that not only functioned as a weaving, but also produced sound. Here's a Mac 6 version of my obsessive drawing patch. You'll notice it's got two displays. The smaller of the two displays is where the drawing happens. You can click to add or remove squares to an 8x8 eight eight grid. That image forms the basis of a finished image. The larger image on the right displays the result of doing what Martin Thompson did as he prepared his drawings, taking that original simple figure and recursively creating iterations of the large image that overlap and interact with it. In my patch, each new iteration overlays the previous version, and you can select a graphic operation that controls the behavior wherever image overlap occurs. And, like Martin Thompson's original images, you can invert the dark and light areas of the finished picture, although my process is a lot easier than making a whole other drawing. As I worked with the patch, I decided to add a few touches of my own above and beyond what Martin Thompson had originally done, and this Max patch includes those variations. By default, his images aligned and were tiled relative to the upper left-hand corner of the larger image. The obsessive drawing patch lets you change the anchor point of the drawing, and it also lets you offset the overlaid images when you calculate the look of the finished image as well. Martin Thompson's images were also created by doing simple tiling reproducing the same image edge to edge over and over again. In the jittered world, we'd say that we were wrapping the image at its edges. But if you know jitter, you also know that you can tile images by creating mirror images at each boundary. We call that folding. This process creates really interesting artifacts by introducing a really interesting balance of symmetry and asymmetry into the iterated images. So I added that ability too. Although the Max patch is actually fairly simple, the results were and are a lot more engaging and more beautiful than I really ever imagined. I guess I can see how they would be something that you'd want to think about and work on over and over again. I think about Martin Thompson every time I work with the patch. And unlike all the painstaking efforts necessary for Martin to create his drawings, creating a final image as a graphics file using my Max patch is a good deal different. It's just a matter of pressing a button and naming the resulting file. So that's a quick introduction to the obsessive drawing patch. I think you'll find it pretty easy to figure out, and I hope you'll find it a source of pleasure and edification. In the next Practical Max video in this series, I'll open the patch up and I'll show you how it works its magic.